Hey folks, I'm John P. That is Big D, and we're gonna show you the Ken Onion Knife and Tool Sharpener. Welcome to Geek Beat. All right, guys. So we've got the uh, Ken Onion uh, knife and uh, knife and tool sharpener over here. It's it's probably a, a, one of the most unique knife sharpeners I've seen, and it's it's really innovative. They've they've done some things um, uh, to the original Worksharp, which came out a couple years ago. But then uh, they asked Ken Onion to come in and collaborate with them, and he gave them some ideas. So this is what the tool sharpener looks like uh, to to break it down. Uh, obviously, you can see that it us it's using a, a belt sharpening system. Uh, we have an adjustable angle guide here so we can adjust the uh, angle of the blade and we can also uh, sharpen scissors and other uh, other tools with it like axes. So uh, Now one of the things that's unique about this is other knife sharpeners often will have a fixed grinding position so and they'll use some kind of an abrasive disc. It might have like a diamond dust or some kind of really hard grit on it and right. you basically take a knife and you stick it in there and you just drag it across a wheel and the wheel is spinning, you drag it across there. This one, because it's using belts and because it has this adjustment function here means that we can drag, we will, when, when it's turned on, we will pull our blade through a guide on each side and it will give us a very precise angle. Now that's important because you might have different Right, so angles for different purposes, right? So, like for for some of my for a hunting knife, you're probably going to use a little bit of a thicker angle. Uh, for a fillet knife, you obviously want something really thin uh, that can slice through a fish or something like that. So it really depends on the purpose of the tool you're you're using. I personally prefer like a 20 degree angle on my on my pocket knives. Uh, generally, it's recommended you go uh, 20 to 25 on your pocket knives, and uh, and I go a little I go a little narrower on mine because I want them to be sharper, but at the expense of edge toughness. So mine will dull much quicker, right. but I have to just sharpen them more. So I'll sharpen a lot, but I just like it to be really, really, you know, fine slicing. So Speaking of edges going going away quickly, this knife sharpener actually does something a little bit different than, than the uh, sharpener you mentioned earlier. What happens is when a knife comes out of the factory, you have some, the, 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 the angle of the blade is basically a very sharp point. Yeah, perfect it's, V. It's, a, it's perfect, it's, it's straight. But what this this sharpener does is it'll actually come down, and if you can imagine the blade, it's going to actually come down and it's going to be rounded, basically up to the edge. And the reason that occurs is if you notice, this gives. Okay, so when we push our blade against it, you see how it curves. So that means it's kind of like taking this piece of material and going like this along the edge. You see how it kind of bends along the edge, as opposed to having a very hard surface like a ceramic disc, which when you push the blade against it, the disc does not give. And so that give in the, in the, uh, the slack in the belt is what causes it to round the, exactly. the edge. And the advantage of doing that to your blade is you actually have more material behind the actual edge which, mean, which means it's going to take a lot longer to uh, to get dull. Yeah, and it will even slice through stuff better sometimes. Right. Uh, professional bladesmiths use a very large version of a belt like this. So anyway, let's show them how it works now. What have you got? Uh, what are we going to sharpen first? Well, I, I brought a few dull knives. Obviously, Callie's knife, it's actually pretty sharp, but it was, it was sharpened with a different sharpener. So We can fix it? We're going to fix it. <laughs> so... Um, other knife sharpeners, you can see that the, the edge is a little bit rough on there, and um, it's it's almost at the point where we would call it shiny sharp, but you can see there are fine lines and striations in the blade. And what this sharpener is going to do, we're going to run it through about 60 passes on your t total, uh, one, um, 10 passes on each side with three different belts, and we're going to get it to the point where the blade is rounded on both sides, and smooth, and it's going to be what we call the ultimate cutting edge or shiny sharp. Nice. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our edge guide. This is basically here to help us keep the, the knife on a nice even plane as we're pulling it through. Um, and you'll, you'll notice as I pull the knife through, I'm going to stop the belt when the blade, the tip of the blade is about halfway through the belt. Uh, and that's to prevent uh, wear, excessive wear and tear on the belt. So without further ado, let's do. Oh, what what degree, what angle are you gonna actually set this on? So since this knife is probably not gonna get sharpened very often yep. because you know Callie's probably not gonna sharpen it too often, 
and she doesn't have time for it, let's set a 25 degree angle on there. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit steeper than what you and I uh, prefer because we we sharpen our knives often. But this is going to give her a you know a good cutting It'll edge. It's going to stay sharp longer. It's going to stay sharp long, and it's going to work real. real. And, and by the way, just just to be clear, this is also going to be do what we call resetting the blade, the resetting the edge, because this edge that was put on here at the factory most certainly is not 25 degrees. So when we're done, this is going to look different than than uh, than it does currently because this is probably a shallower edge. So let's see let's see it go at it. Right. So as I'm pulling this through, you're going to notice that I'm going to be pulling it through at about one inch a second on both sides. Uh, so we're going to do about ten passes on this blade right here. And notice how I'm alternating sides and I'm going through. The point of the uh, of, of alternating sizes, is where, as as you've maybe seen in previous videos, that when you're sharpening a knife, you wanna you wanna you wanna get a burr to come off on the edge. So that's what we're doing right now. By the way, one of the things that you can actually do on here, depending on what type of blade you're sharpening, is you can actually adjust the speed um, at which you uh, at, at which you're pulling the belt. And uh, that's useful for uh, you know if you're for for higher precision, you generally want to go with a slower uh, a slower speed. And uh, for something like a pocket knife, uh, we're obviously going to go something faster. Let's see. Now let me see if I can feel a burr here on the edge. So yeah, I'm starting to feel a burr, and also we're already starting to see the edge looking a little bit different. It's it's even actually looking. You can see that it looks a little bit rounded. Uh, I don't know how well that's translating there, Pablo, in the video, but uh, it's starting. It's starting to come through. Now, what grit are you using on that on that belt right there? So the th the, the the kind of the weird thing is we I don't exactly know what grit this is. They have a couple different grits. They have uh, basically a coarse grit, which is this one right here, and uh, that'll eat a lot of material away very quickly. Exactly, and they don't recommend you use this on knives unless you have something that's really messed up. Um, but they're, they, they've labeled their, uh, their, their the belts X65, X22, and X4. And whatever that means. Whatever that means. But uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's what we're doing. So, so this is kind of a medium grit. This is this is the coarse grit that you. Oh, this is their coarse grit. The for, other for is knives. their ridiculous grit. This is coarse. Yeah, and they do have a coarser grit, but we're not going to be using that one for. On, on, on with this with this tool right here. One other thing too. Let me point out. Um, when you're doing this, it's very important not to overheat the blade. So with any kind of machine that drives a belt, you could often, uh, you could get that belt going so fast that you heat that blade up tremendously. And if you heat the blade up, you will damage the heat treatment on the steel. So remember, if you've ever watched any uh, TV shows about them forging knives or something, what they'll do is they'll they'll stick it in the fire, they get it red hot, and then they quench it, okay? And it goes through a little more process than that. But uh, by heating it and then rapidly cooling it, you lock in the hardness of the steel. So with any kind of machine like this, if you get it really, really hot, I mean, to where the metal is actually glowing a color, you have damaged the blade. So don't let that happen. And one of the things you can do, if you want to sharpen a lot quicker than Deeran is sharpening, you can get a like a glass of water and set it nearby so that as you're sharpening quickly and you feel that thing heating up, dip it in the water, then keep sharpening. That'll keep it cool. All right, so. How we doing? We're getting there. This It's taking a little bit longer than I expected. This is yeah. a pretty good steel. But, yeah, I'm uh, not surprised. This is this is one of those cases because we're resetting the edge completely. You may you may want to go with that really aggressive grit. So I feel a small burr on the edge, and this is this by the way is how you test for that. So the last side that he sharpened had to have been this one. He must have run a pass through on this side because it bends the edge down a little on the other side. So you take your fingers, you you put them flat against the blade this way, and you slide them over, and you should feel a little roughness. And it, and the the bigger the burr, we call it the burr, uh, the rougher it'll feel. So there's a little bit of one there, 
but not a huge burr. You don't need a big burr, but you need a little bit. I'd say maybe just a little more. Can I try a couple passes? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Just be sure when you're when you're pulling it through that the blade is resting up against the guide on yep. each side. Yep, so we keep it flat on the guide and squeeze the trigger. Before you before you pull it through and turn it on. There you go. It's already it already looks different. It you can see that it seems kind of polished and it's starting to be rounded on the edge. I'm not sure it may be just too too thin for the camera to catch that, but can you see any kind of edge uh, roundness over the edge of that, Pablo? Not really. Too too sharp. Okay, let's see. Let me just see if it's not really shaving sharp yet. So uh, let's try and go to another grit. All right. So let's change out the belts. All right. Show us how you change out that belt. So there's. I like to do this first. First, I like to take the tension off the belt by moving this uh, this tension adjustment out here all the way down. Then what we want to do is we want to take the edge guide and flip it into its uh, holding position. On the back here, you can see that there's a little tab for you to grab your finger on there, lift it up, and then pull off the top, and then you can the belt kind of just slides out. Easy to do. Pretty now, easy. These belts will wear out. You can't just sharpen things indefinitely with them. So when it's time for them to be replaced, uh, did you check what's the pricing like on these belts? So replacement belt packs uh, that, that are included with this sharpener uh, are about 15 bucks. You can get, it on, get them on Amazon. Um, and I've been using this sharpener and I've been testing it with a lot of knives. I've probably sharpened at least 15 or 20 knives now. Um, on the same set? On the same set. And uh, Ken Onion, the man who, de who developed this, um, basically said, you don't have to worry about changing out the belts until they actually fall apart. And when they fall apart, go ahead and change them out. Obviously, as they're wearing down, you're, you may have to run run the blade through a few more passes, but um, you can use them until they basically break down. And one of the tricks that I use is uh, when I'm doing this kind of sharpening with my professional gear, if you started with a belt that was, let's say, a medium grit, as it wears down, it essentially just get, becomes a finer grit. So what you can do is, uh, if you were using, if you were, let's say, starting with a heavy grit and then a medium and then a fine, um, as they wear down, treat each one as if it were one belt lower. So start with a new heavy grit one, take your old heavy grit one and, and treat it like a medium grit, etc. So you can get longer life out of that way. In fact, I'm going to turn the speed down just a little bit. There's a little speed adjustment down here. Um, as I get finer on the blade, on, on the belts, I like to uh, turn the speed down so we get a, a more refined edge. Okay, knife sharpening gathers a crowd. We got people standing around to see what happened with this bad boy. So here's the standard test. We get a, a, just a little white piece of paper, plain paper, and we're just gonna see if we can slice it like that. Obviously, the thinner that you can make the slice, uh, it's nice and sharp. So good job with that one, Deeran. Um, so clearly, we've demonstrated that uh, with the normal attachment, it's possible to, to make really, really sharp blades using this process. That's not the only thing we can sharpen. That's right. So uh, I've taken the actual cartridge off. These are actually removable, and you'll see we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, one of the other things that's built into the standard cartridge is actually something that you probably have at home that's probably dull, your scissors. Um, basically, it has a scissor guide in here. All you have to do is, with, the, with it obviously on the, uh, on the uh, on the motor, basically set your scissors in there, set it to normal speed and pull it through. Um, they recommend you use the super fine belt with scissors, but uh, that's uh, that's one of the features you have in there. So yeah. that's, you know. Nice to get a two in one. You gotta sharpen your scissors. Now, right. that's not all. We've also got this big heavy duty blade grinding attachment. And that would be if you wanted to use something, you know, get something sharp like this big, uh, what is this, a tooth breaker you've got here? So this is actually a dental fire... tool, I don't know. This is a firefighter's knife that I bought a couple years ago. 
And the problem with it is, I tried sharpening it in here, but it, it didn't fit. It's too thick. It literally it's, Yeah, it's go. literally too big to get in there. Now, one of the things that, that we didn't mention earlier is you can actually, well, let's see if I can get it, take the guide off and sharpen just like that. But I personally don't like to do that because I don't have, a, have an idea of what angle I'm using. Yep. So, John, you want to show them how to do this? Sure, we can do that. So what will happen with this one is going to be, uh, this particular blade is a little unusual, but the principle would apply even with a dual-sided blade. What, what you're going to do is you're going to use the flat portion here as your rest for the blade angle. So we're going to kind of put it on that blade angle and we're going to figure out, okay, that's where we need it to be. And then you're using, you're going to try and use your muscle memory here to bring it straight up with this belt running, bring it straight up and start here and drag across and make a pass. Then you can go back and reset, make sure you've got it at the right angle, come up and drag across and make a pass. And so that's how we're gonna do it. Then we're gonna turn, you'd obviously turn it to the other side and we do it the same way. So this is more of a manual process. If you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, grind big blades with this particular attachment, it's gonna take a little more practice. I would recommend starting with your smaller blades and the blade guide first until you feel really confident being able to hold that blade and pull it very smoothly through at the same same angle and each time you know pushing against the guide until you get to the point where the muscle memory kicks in and you, even without the guide you could do it at the same angle so it's just practice practice and by the time you've sharpened like all the knives in your kitchen drawer and then your neighbors come over asking you to do the same thing you, you'll be good at this exactly yeah <laughs> I've, I've shown shown the results with this with, that i've gotten out of the sharpener and people have been really impressed with it and uh Everyone wants me to sharpen their knives now. Let's put it this way. Even I bought one of these and I've got thousands of dollars with the knife sharpening gear at home. I think that it's a great little tool for something you can carry around with you and get very repeatable results and that's good. And the price is also quite impressive. 150 bucks on Amazon. That's right, with prime shipping. So yeah. The, uh, and the replacement belts for the uh, standard uh, cartridge are about $15 a piece. So yeah, good great stuff. deal. The other thing that we that we have that uh, that uh, Derek's the guys at Worksharp uh, sent us is the uh, is the tool grinding attachment, and you can see this is really meant for uh, super grinding. heavy duty super heavy duty stuff. You can remove burrs off uh, from uh, from from things you've cut. It, you may have remembered uh, John has a really nice steel cutting saw, but if you don't have a really nice steel cutting saw and you end up with some nasty burrs on steel. You can remove those. You can sharpen lawnmower blades and axes with this. We're gonna bring an axe up here. We got to do that. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna it's axe time. So, um, you guys go attachment. check it out. Uh, check out the uh, blog post associated with it. Look in the notes, and we'll have links to all these products and attachments there. And I would give it a thumbs up. How about you, Big D? I'd give it two thumbs up. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. It's time, to, it's time to, I don't know, make somebody pay. Who, with no help from Beavis and Butthead, has generated almost 30 million views. Um, you know, that's kind of like environmentally friendly. Uh, you're not going to get fumes and stuff like that on it, uh, out of you it. You know that criminals could access your bank accounts online or that you could unknowingly infect your company's computer.